Good morning, saints. This is a brand new day. All kinds of things inside of this day that will unfold. Uh, and at the end of this day, when we lay our head on the pillow, we can look back and see all the things that has happened in our life today. And we can give God the glory and honor and the thanks for being a provider and a protector and all the things that he has done for us in this one day at the end of the day when you lay down the rest so that your rest can be sweet your rest can be good but I'm glad to be with you today I am um, excited about the message that God has given me this word of encouragement uh, to give to you today and I pray that it truly encourages you and, and uh, lift your spirit and um, give you fuel uh, to continue pressing on because these are some hard times but with God all things are possible amen amen let's open in prayer Heavenly Father I thank you Lord God for this this wonderful day with your plans in it for us, Lord God, with this word that you have for us. And I, I pray that we all are able to hear you speaking and be able to glean that nugget that we need, that 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 bread that we need today uh, to chew on and, and, and to digest and uh, to help us feel full and nourished, nourished to go on uh, to see another day. And so, Father, I thank you, and I thank you for this message. I pray to remove myself out the way, Lord God, and that you may be seen, you may be heard, and that we be obedient to any direction that you give us, Lord God, that we'll be ready to move out into uh, that word by faith and believing, Lord God, that all things are truly possible with you. And so I thank you today, in Jesus' name, amen. So today's message, we're talking about um, Joseph. We'll be talking about Joseph, and um, he is a very interesting person. And, you know, when you, you start out in uh, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18, and uh, we start reading this little bit that we have about Joseph, it looks like it's not, you know, uh, enough information. And he just plays this one little uh, little part um in the big scheme of things, he's got this one little little part, but his part is so grand, it's so big, and it is so awesome. And uh, to see a human uh, take the word of God and just uh, run with it, he goes with it, and um, he removes himself out the way and um, began to pursue the plan of God. And... Um, it's as if God gave him uh, such a deep revelation or he put it into his spirit that this is what I have created you to do. This is the plan I had for you in the beginning, even though you didn't know anything about it. You didn't know any anything about how this was going to come about and, and uh, Mary, you know, being your wife and how your family was going to get started. You didn't have any thoughts or anything about that and maybe even with the marriage you didn't even have the you know this was probably set up by the parents and so um but being being a man who um he just took the message and um and, and ran with it and so as we go into looking into the story about this man the history on this man joseph um I pray that uh, it enlarges your thinking about him. As I always say, these people that we read about in the Bible are ordinary people. They're like, uh, you know, your neighbors, your cousins, your your, your family members, uh, situations. And we see government issues. We see the government issues they had then. And we see the government issues we have now. And so you see what the Jews was coming against the Romans uh, you know, their their lifestyle then and, and uh, all kinds of, you know, trouble with government and and mistreating the people and, and all of these issues. 
Well, today we still got uh, uh, issues uh, dealing with uh, government and, and, and not taking care of the people or taking care of some of the people or taking care of some of the businesses and not taking care of other businesses. So we, we see all of this stuff that is still happening and not only here but around the world we see these things these are still ordinary people it doesn't matter what their title is they're still ordinary people and so we as ordinary people we need our maker we need our God in our life to direct us because he truly has a plan for us to be able to make it day by day in this world that he has placed us in and so um, the title that I have today is Two Simple Words, and it is, and yet, and yet. And so uh, uh, it just, you know, brought joy to my spirit when I was studying this. It brought joy to my spirit when I was uh, putting this message together because truly, I mean, when I uh, start putting a message together and I'm looking at characters, um, I, I get excited and, and I run uh, I run with it and I run so far with it that I have to bring myself back and I'm like, uh, you know, you don't went too far. You're not making a movie here. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're just trying to build the story. You're trying to get the readers uh I think with the gift that God has given me, I try to get the readers to see, or I mean the, the listeners, the hearers, to see in their mind uh what it is that God is saying. I, I want them to see their I want them to see that person. I want them to be able to imagine how that person maybe is dressed or how that person may look, uh how, you know. Things are happening at that time, and I tried to bring in what we'll deal, what we may be dealing with now, or some things that may be going on in your life. So it draws you in more, and it it, it tears down those walls that are in the Bible and, and the language to where you can understand it. And when when you you start to get an understanding of things then you can begin to build on it or you can begin to get a relationship. When you begin to understand a person, you'll, you'll, you'll see if you want to have a relationship with that person or not because now I have an understanding. I can see who you are and I know who you are. I, I can tell what Matthew is talking about even though Matthew is writing to the Jews and he's trying to get this uh, laid down to the Jews about uh, Christ. And uh, so he, you know, he's painting the pictures from uh, uh, a standpoint of reaching the Jews. Whereas Paul, when you know, when he turned and took his message uh, to the Gentiles, he started taking it, you know, the language and everything towards the Gentile, uh, so that they could see and they could understand and that they could fit their lives into what it is that he is trying to talk to them about. And so that is what I, I want to do today. So uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. This might be one of my uh, shortest messages uh, here today because I, I, I want to stick with this. I don't want to go into a whole lot of other stuff. And uh, this is my December message. Um, and so last year, uh, the, the end of uh, 2019... Uh, Bishop had me to finish out the year with the Christmas Eve message and everything. And so uh, this is my, uh, I guess, so far the last message for this year. And it is entitled, And Yet. So I, I could say, and this isn't the last. And yet. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm reading in the NIV. Now, uh, it's one part in here where I got the, the, the title and yet, it's in my uh, Bible, uh, the U version of the NIV, but it's not in my, you know, in my, my older Bibles. It doesn't say and yet, but here it says and yet, and I like that. So, all right, so much for that. Okay, <clears throat> and a little bit before I go into the story, also, I had written this out, and I, I want to bring this to your attention. As we are looking toward exiting 
2020. Where as we are looking towards exiting 2020, where are we spiritually? Where are you spiritually? If you looked at your life right now, if you examine your life at this moment, sit down and meditate spiritually, where are you? Are you, you know, more uh, mature in your walk with the Lord now than, than you were 2019? Did 2020 cause you to be uh, this year angry, bitter, or fearful person because of all of this that's going on? What, what did it do to you? What did 2020 do to you? What did it take away from you? Or what did it bring uh, into your life? Did it build you up? Has 2020 built you up? Or has 2020 this year torn you down? Were you a pride person and 2020 came in and brought that humbleness that, that, that uh, maybe you need? Were you a hard person and 2020 came in and softened you up? Were you a wealthy person and 2020 came and just took, took, took from you? Were you a joyful person in, 20, in 2019 and 2020 came and made you more bitter? What did 2020 do to you? What, what did it change? Did it change your faith? Are you still a believer? Are you still walking with God? Did 2020 change your walk because you're not in the, maybe in the house of God or because of, of loved ones that, that fell sick in, in your life? What has 2020 done to you? Now, are you still believing and trusting in God? We're getting ready to go into 2021. Where are you? At our church, we usually we have a, a, a scripture that we like to hold on to, to uh, give us that hope and encouragement through the year. So, uh, you know, if you face some kind of hard difficulty or something like that, that, that verse that you chose at the beginning of the year was going to be kind of like a foundation, uh, uh, a leaning stone or something that, that, that you could that would hold you up in hard times. Are you still doing that? And that, that is to uh, everlasting word, that question is. But if not, that's something that we do. That might be something that you would like to try for 2021, if you never have, to have that uh, word that you can stand on, that word that you can lean up against, that word that uh, brings that comfort to you when you need it, you know? And then some of us even had that one word, you know, that, that, that one word that would come uh, that you meditated on and you believe the Lord gave you uh, for that year. I know one year mine was up. So if things were not going like, I could look up. <laughs> look up. Hold my head up. I could get up. I could rise up. <laughs> you know, I'd take it up another level. Up was my word. So my one word. And then one year was new. And behold, all things have become new. You know, and so I'm doing a new thing in your life. And so these are, uh, you know, different ways just to, to keep yourself encouraged, to keep yourself built up and, and keep hearing the word of God. Keep hearing God's, you know, speaking to you. And that that, that is comforting. And so that... So what are your hopes and dreams for 2021? But of course, we will still be wearing our masks. We'll be social distancing. And it continues of what we have been doing for the past 10 months or so. But there is light breaking through the darkness we've been experiencing. With vaccinations and hygiene, hopefully we'll be back in our houses of worship soon and maybe we can get back to going to school and, and and outdoor events and sports events and things like that and start getting some uh 
some things where we can uh, get around one another and touch one another, laugh with one another, go out to dinner with one another, start getting some of those things back in our lives. And, and I, I miss uh, conferences. I, I miss the women getting together. Uh, I miss my uh, uh, women's ministry going forth and traveling. I, I enjoyed all of that. And uh, if I didn't, I wouldn't have been doing it. But uh, not doing it just religiously. I did it because I truly, truly enjoyed everything about that. And I do. I miss that. I can't wait to get back to that. I, you know, pouring into the women and hearing the women talk and, and just everything about it. So I love it. Uh, so no matter what phrase... No, no matter what phase we may enter, you know, because they got the phases of one through five, our God will be with us. So that's what I want to give you. Our God will be with us. Now, to get back, to get to the message of looking at Joseph. Uh, so, cha Matthew chapter 1, verse uh, 18. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I like that language uh, that they have here. She was found to be pregnant. Who is found to be pregnant? <laughs> you know, like, uh, you know, uh, that just, wow. You know, girl, where where that come from? You know, uh, yeah, she was found to be pregnant. Uh, you you either girl, you was pregnant, yeah, uh, or you you know, are you you're not pregnant? But um, different times, different 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 ways to uh, put the message there. But she she was found to to be pregnant, but they was already pledged to to be married. And and, and and it's right there before they even came together. Uh, this was a serious, very serious situation for Mary. Um, I mean, to the point of her life uh, could have been taken because of her breaking the law. Not, I mean, you going to tell these people that you're, you're pregnant and um, they're, they're ready to kill you, to stone you. Because this was a serious offense that you had uh, committed, and not—they're um, not going. Who's going to take your word that uh, um, you know you guys hadn't come together? That get in the neighborhood. Uh, of course, y'all been sleeping together. Of course, y'all been sneaking and doing whatever you know. And because now you're pregnant, then nobody don't just get pregnant by uh, you know sitting on the toilet seat and, and different things like that. And those things just don't happen. Um, so uh, this was a very serious thing. And I, I can't imagine someone so young and trying to deal with this and can't go to someone to talk to. I mean, who was she going to talk to about this? And for her to even, um, she's a married woman. Well, promised marriage, you know, the dowry and all that probably had already taken place. And um, just waiting on him to come and they can have the celebration, you know, have the wine and the, uh, the good food and all the people and music and dancing and, and everything. And just this is what they're waiting on because now they, they are considered a married couple. If not, he wouldn't have been thinking about how he was going to divorce her. So it lets you know how this thing was already done. <laughs> Verse 19. Because Joseph, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet, and yet, that's where I got my, did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. Now, let's go up to where it says his mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. 
through the Holy Spirit. Mm, the Holy Ghost got me pregnant. Mm, yeah, some kind of ghost. He got me pregnant. I, I don't know, you know. <laughs> trying to explain um, this pregnancy. But because Joseph, her husband, and you know, again, they married, was faithful to the law. So I'm saying because he was a righteous man. In God's eye, he was a righteous man. He was he was a man that did everything to the letter, to the T. Uh, you know, he uh, maybe was a, a gentle and kind man, uh, Joseph. But he was faithful to the law. And yet, that's a that's that's a, that's a, that's some trouble right there when that and yet come, because now Joseph's got to make a decision. He's got to make a decision. Uh, um, if I go with this decision that could cause her her life, I don't want her blood on my hand. I don't want her to die. I, yeah, I, 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 he's still in love with the woman. He's not hating the woman. He, he's looking at her as maybe being un, unfaithful. But then it's something inside of him that's saying that she's telling the truth. That she's telling the truth. And, and yet, he's got this situation. And yet, he's got to deal with this situation. And yet, what am I going to do? He didn't want to expose her to public disgrace. Everybody talking about it or putting it down. Because if he took it to, to the high priest and uh, they would have to bring her out and then he would have to cast a stone because he's the one accusing her of the hurts, damage been done to him. And then the other people uh, do their part and all of that or, you know, and, and cast her out now. That, all, that, that not only involves Mary and Joseph, but what about her parents? What about, that's your daughter. You know, what about them being uh, uh, put out of the, the community? What if they can't go to the marketplace anymore? What if, you know, because of the talk, that's your daughter and, 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 and the shame that she has brought. Remember the blind boy, the blind man? And, and he had to say that they went, go get his parents. And they say, now, was he blind or whatever? And, and the parents say, well, he's grown, asked him. He'll tell you. So this would have involved uh, Mary's parents, you know, and brought them in. And who else are the family? You know, when, when that disgrace and stuff come in, it's not just that person. It's your family. You brought shame on your mother. You brought it on your father, your grandparents, all of that, your siblings. It's your whole household. All of y'all are drunks. All of y'all are witches. All of y'all are fools. All of y'all, that whole household of whatever, you know, the last name is. You know, you get labeled with that. You know, all of them are fools, you know, and stuff. So uh, this was a big issue. But he didn't want to. Um, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't want to uh, expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind. Joseph had in mind to divorce her quietly. We we're gonna do this, you know. And and that's being a man. I I I imagine Joseph with a little bit of height and a little slim, but uh, uh being a man. He didn't have to be all muscular and all of that. He showed it in the way he act. He showed his maturity in a man and making decisions, uh, even if he was in his 20s or maybe uh, uh, early 30s, but um, uh, late 20s, and she being a young girl, but, um, uh, uh, you know, a young woman under 18. She was still at her parents' house. She's still living in her parents' house. So the shame that would have been there. Hey, bring the whole family out, all of them. You know, we don't go in, they, you know, we don't get any details or anything about the background, about the family and everything, because we don't, want, we don't need to dig into that. 
<laughs> the story doesn't need to dig into that. It's enough with Jesus, the virgin birth, um, angels coming and all of that. It is so much drama right there that you don't even need to go into who Mary's mother is and, and her and her papa. You don't even need to touch that. <laughs> wow. But he had in mind, he's just going to do this quietly. Because he's a faithful man to the law. <clears throat> now, if Joseph didn't make a, a decision, a, a rightful decision, not knowing that, you know, the angel come talk to him and all that yet. That haven't happened. He's still trying to uh, figure out what he's going to do. If he doesn't do something and they go forth, now they got to lie about the timing of the, of the, of the pregnancy and the, of the marriage and, and uh, 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 that they, um, they had been having sex, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, people, hey, neighbors, wait a minute. She didn't start showing to such and such. Blah, 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 the, the talk, the talk, the talk in the neighborhood, uh, you know, in the marketplace and everything. So this was a, this was a big situation that was going on and, um, your heart has to go out to Joseph because of the, the anger this man is dealing with. I mean, we, we face anger and dealing with people that we thought was good, a good friend, maybe a spouse maybe even a sibling, but they hurt you, you know, deeply. They lied, they cheated, they stole from you or whatever, you know, and, and it changed the relationship. And that relationship may have been changed forever. It may have never even got back together. Because of hardness of heart, I'm not going to forgive them. I'm not going to, Joseph could have been saying, I'm not going to forgive her. You know, she taking me through this. I don't got it. I'm, you know, getting everything together. Look at the shame she brought on her, on her parents, on my parents, on uh, to me. You know, the anger, and then, but then I love her, and yet I love her, and yet I want her, and yet I want to build a family with her. But then on the other side, no, I don't. I'm, I'm trying to think. It, he's trying to think it through. But I know what I'm gonna do, and and he's pondering, and and one thought is coming up on the to to ponder means the the thoughts are building, and so it's a thought coming on to another thought, and connected with another thought, and now he's coming up with, you know what? Um, I'm going to divorce her quietly. And he don't want to deal with all this other stuff. He don't want people coming up to him, talking to him and telling him this and telling him that. He don't want to deal with that. And he's trying to figure out how she, how's this woman going to raise a kid? You look at the times. Those were hard times. We already know they didn't have money. So these were hard times that they were dealing with already. So... You know, he think about it. he still loved this woman, even though the anger is there or the hurt is there. The loneliness has come in. The unfaithfulness has come in. How could she has come in and all that has, has come in. And yet he decided, he decides, he decides, I have come to a decision. I'm going to divorce her. And I'm going to do it quietly. It's going to be, yeah. I don't know how, but there, he's, you, you, once you get the decision on what it is you're going to do, then you can begin to put uh, other things together. It's kind of like when I, I'm getting my message together. If I can get my title, then I can get the other stuff to fill it in. If I can get the title of my message first, I can fill in the other but it's getting a title. It's like, Lord, what? So now he's got the decision. Uh, he had in mind, I'm going to divorce her quietly. I'm gonna do it. So now the steps to a uh, uh, quiet divorce. Is there a such thing as a quiet divorce? I know people that have gotten divorces and they were anything but quiet. Uh, there were lies. 
uh, people begin, the couples begin to lie on each other. They begin to hate each other. They begin to hurt each other. They begin to, uh, you know, look at how to harm each other. They begin to take from one another. One cleaning out the bank account. One cleaning out this. One want to take the house. One want to take the dog. And the fights, the fights, the fights, the fights, the fights. Who is a quiet divorce? But this is what he wanted to do. Verse 20, in chapter 1 of Matthew. But after he had considered this, because this is what he was, he, he had settled in on that. After he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, <laughs> Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. This angel comes to him. And you begin to see some other things about Joseph. And the angel Lord appeared to him and appeared to him in a dream. Sometimes we can work ourselves up so much in the daytime uh, with worry and stress and all of that. That God has to lay us down and when we're resting, he is able to give us the dream. He's able to give us a message. Uh, when when Adam uh, uh, did all the work and all of this, he's doing in the garden. And God said, it's not good for man to be alone. I would make him a help me. He put him to sleep. He put him to sleep. And then he did what he needed to do with him while he was asleep. And he made a woman from his rib. And then brought her to him. And so sometimes in our sleep, God speaks. And if you don't believe that, if you don't believe in dreams and all that, I'm not going to be in an argument with anybody about um, their spiritual walk. If you don't believe God can speak to you in your dreams, fine. If you believe it, good. <laughs> because I believe it. I mean, I, I believe what he says. I, I, I You know, I don't want to take the things of God. And try to put them in a man's way. I want my God to be God. I want him to be mighty and powerful and invincible. And I want him to be everything that he says he is. And I want to honor him for who he is and the way he is. And that he's in control. I want to honor him. I don't want to say, well, no. Um, he doesn't do dreams. He doesn't speak to you in dreams. He doesn't, he doesn't do that. Well, then I, I don't need another man. I don't need another man. I, I want God. And I want the true and living God. I want the God that is the God of love who has compassion because I need all that. I, I want the God who is a God of mercy because I need all that. I fall short and I need all that he can, you know, uh, give me. That he can spare me. And not bring judgment up on me on that. And he can spare me and mercy come in and say, well, you know, let her go this time. And, and don't, you know, I, 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 need, I need God. I don't need another man and his judgmental uh, attitude that, that is not righteous. I need God that has a righteous uh, it has the righteous anger, has the righteous uh, uh, decisions, the righteous ways, and is holy and, and just just. That's what I need. So if he want to speak to me in a dream, I go to sleep and I have a dream. Oh, my God. Lord, have your way. Have your way. How perfect. How perfect is that? And so Joseph has this, has this dream. And the angel appeared to him. <clears throat> and the angel gave him some information. Joseph, son of David. Uh, that, that 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 that's big. <laughs> what do you mean, uh, Reverend Janus, that that's big? Because David was king. Not just any David. We're talking about King David. He is from the lineage of King David. This is one of his offspring. This is one of his sons all down the line. D uh, David, uh, the, the king, the warrior, uh, he's from this lineage. And so uh, the angel comes and says, Joseph, son of David, there's no mistake of who I'm talking to. He's in his sleep. He's sleep. 
But the, 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 the angel is right on. And Joseph's spirit is a, is a, is alive, and he and he's he's yes, this is this is right. <laughs> this is who I am, and sometimes you need to be awakened in your spirit of who you are, of who you are. You are a child of the Most High. You are the child of the Most High God. <laughs> you can stand up. You can speak. You can pray. You can't give praise. You can't give worship unto him. You're a child of the Most High God. Joseph, son of David. Yes. That's who I am. Sometimes you need to be reminded of who you are. You need to wake up in your spirit and, and, and know who you are. You have benefits. You have some privileges. You, there are some things there. You need to wake up and, and look at your contract. You know, you buy the car, it's got, it's got some benefits to that car. <laughs> well, see what's all here. Yeah. Yes, that's who I am. You got the right one. You're talking to the right one. I am uh, the son of David. <laughs> and he says, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. He, uh, he knows about everything. All this you've been contemplating, all this you've been thinking about, all of this, oh, worry and stress and all of that, the story is already known in heaven. It's known. It's known what you're going through. It's known what you're facing. It, 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 it knows that you need that, that house note, that rent note. That it knows that you need grocery. Heaven knows that all of these things. They, it know, they know about it. Heaven knows about it. That these are things that you need. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to take her home. Take her home as your wife. All right, let's clear this up. Let's get this thing going. Y'all will get down to, to the time uh, anyway. Okay, let's put let's, let's start putting more emotion on uh, on this this marriage. Let's let's get. To sealing this thing up. Let's get to doing this thing because uh, there's a pressing issue here. It's the fullness of time. Remember Galatians talk about it. it's the fullness of time. When the fullness of time had fully come, all right, then, then God brought forth his son. And so this time, it, 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 it's, it's a lot of things got to come together. But first of all, we got to get this done, okay, and take her home. Don't take her to her mother's. Go get her from her mother's and take her home to her home and take her as your wife. Let's do this. I mean, this wife is, is the wifey. Okay. <laughs> Let's take her on home. <laughs> and um, so that's good. Take her home as your wife. Yeah. Get her from parents' house. Let's go on to your own house because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. It's from God. What's, in, what's conceived in her is from God. And if Joseph being a righteous man, if Joseph knows the scripture, and I'm sure he, he studied his uh, family lineage and, and, and knowing that uh, the birth was going to come forth, not knowing it was probably him, but, you know, things, the scriptures and, and revelation is beginning to open up. It, uh, understanding is coming. Um, and, and so he began to see some things uh, that are happening here, that I'm the one that, that's chosen out of this. Uh, there was going to be a virgin birth, and she's talking about the virgin birth. I am in the lineage of, of David, okay, from the uh, lineage of David, okay. It's, it's things beginning to line up that this angel is telling him about uh, this couple. And it's from the Holy Spirit, it's from God. He is a God-fearing man. He is a righteous man. Now you're speaking my language now. I, I have faith in believing in this. And she will give birth to a son. Some more information. She will give birth to a son. Wow. And you are to give him the name Jesus. Jesus. Hmm. Because he will save his people from their fear. And this is going to be his mission. He's going to save his people from their sins. Not from the Romans. Not, not from this and not from that, but from sin. He's going to save 
mankind, his people, whoever father gives him. No one can come to the father unless he first, uh, uh, you know, draws them. God draws the people he wants. He has chosen. And then they come forth. If you want to be, you can. Whoever will can be saved. But he's come to save us from the sins. Sin. Not from the toothache, headache. Those are all good benefits, but from the sins. He, because he would save his people uh, from their sins. That, that, that is great. That is great. Hallelujah. And to continue reading in verse 22. Let me back up a little bit here for some of my notes here. Hallelujah. God is good. Being that he is, uh, you know, once you settle an issue that you've been dealing with, you can begin to put the, the pieces in place where there's anger uh, now that he has, uh, um, he's going to take her home to be his wife. He's going to be obedient. We see Joseph has a spirit of obedience and uh, he's not arguing with the, the angel, even in his, he sleep, he's in his spirit. But I've had dreams where you, you asking questions, you know, you know, you have, uh, I've had dreams. Maybe you've had dreams where you see yourself and you know that you're dreaming and watching yourself and you know, you're dreaming and talking, you know, you're dreaming and laughing as you're watching yourself, you know you're dreaming and hearing things that are that's funny and make you laugh. Are you hearing things that uh, are sad and make you cry? And a lot of times it ends up, your emotions end up, it, it works from your spirit into your flesh to where it ended up waking you up out of that. But uh, jo Joseph was an obedient man. All of this was lining up. And the, another thing that gets me about Joseph is he was quick. He was quick to do whatever God tells him to do. God sends a message to him by the angel uh, to do this or do that. Joseph was quick to do it. And a lot of times, uh, first of all, we're dealing with, I, I don't believe in, in, in dreams. Or maybe you, you, you buy the story of... It was the food, uh, you know, that gave me a dream like that. It was the gas that gave me a dream like that uh, and, and stuff like that. A lot of worry and, and that's the kind, I got the dream like that. But we don't know the difference. But when we have a spiritual dream, God speaking to us, or uh, we, we having a dream just because of, you know, things going on in our body, uh, medication and, and things of that nature. So we don't know how... Uh, uh, to figure out or to see or uh, have the discernment of whether this is a spiritual dream or not, we don't know. We, we don't know. And so, therefore, we m miss, I'm sure, we miss a lot of things that God wanted to do in our lives or uh, a lot of direction that could have protected us and kept us and saved us. We missed a lot of that because um, we didn't take the dream serious. I know I have spiritual dreams. I know I should write down a lot of the dream, but I dream the dream on through. I don't I won't I won't wake up to go ahead and to record a lot of times the dream. But I'll remember things of the dream through the day and still may not even record it down. So I, you know, I try to figure it out in my mind. And sometimes I sometimes I get it and I write it, you know, and write that down. And, and wait for it to come to pass. But I'm always praying, Lord, just just talk to me like you talked to Moses. Just, you know, let's make it plain. Do I have to go through the dreams and try to figure it out? Because now I'm going to try and figure it out. And I got to line it up that gr the color green that was in the, in the dream and the flower that was in the dream and the daylight that was in the dream and the season of the dream. Or was it day or night? Or was it a, a paved street or... A dirt road. Uh, it's a lot. I, I can't, you know, the, the angel just come and say, okay, Janice, you, you blah, 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 and blah, blah. I would take that. 
I would take it. Yes, I would. Then trying to, to figure all of that out. It's, it's, Lord, you know, you know me. It's a lot. <laughs> but the, I wanted, I wanted to uh, uh, put a little pause right there where we had it, 19, 20. And uh, look at this, and yet, and yet, and where I've got my uh, title uh, for today, and yet. The and yet, you know, begins to turn the, the, the story. Uh, things may be happening and things going on, but, and it could be negative or whatever, and yet, when I put and yet there, it, 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 it's the, I'm still standing or I'm still going forth and I'm still, I'm not denying all of this that's going on in my life. I, I, I see that. I, I accept that. And yet, I'm going to press on. And yet, I'm going to trust God. And yet, <laughs> I'm going to look for the brighter day. And yet... I know this is not going to last, and yet, and so the end yet uh, keeps the faith rolling, and and yet uh, extends that this thing is still moving. It's not a if where you know it's like a well if you know it's like. Um, you know, this other thing had to happen, something that's got to happen for this to take place. No, but the end yet. And yet I would trust God. And yet, uh, I'm not going to back up. And yet, it means I have settled in on a decision, even though all of this is going on. And yet, I'm not turning around. And yet, I'm, st I'm going to stay uh, faithful unto God. And yet, I'm looking forward uh, to a new and brighter day. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. And yet. So you might need to add some and yets and to some of those situations that you're dealing with. And yet. You know, this, this money that the government is supposed to send out uh, you know, I, you know, my house is due, my rent is due, my mortgage is due, or whatever, a car note due, and yet, I'm still trusting in God, and yet, that means right now, yet, <laughs> I am going for. So put some and yet, uh, into your uh, into your conversation. Put some and yet into your uh into your heart and into your mind those and yet to take you on through and you know once you you um joseph got that that decision he was gonna do on what he was gonna do the peace can come in peace and calmness can come in the quietness that he wanted uh uh, in his life can come in. Uh, once you make that decision, uh, it begins to, you can start uh, the healing process. You can start uh, going forward uh, with your life because now you, you've closed a lot of mouths that were speaking. Uh, and, and the mouths, I mean those thoughts, a lot of thoughts that were speaking. You know, with that pondering, that one thought building on another thought, building on another thought. And, and, and but when you come on that decision and he got the right decision uh, 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 to go forth, all of that begins to come down. Those mouths are being shut. So there, you might need to be making some decisions in your life as you're, you're going towards 2021. There may be some decisions that you really need to bring about so that you can get that the quietness to come in. You know, the peace be still uh, in your mind, that peace be still in your body. The quiet, those other voices, those other thoughts that are steady going forward. They're not going anywhere. They're just building up on building up on, you know, um, some things you need to settle, some issues you need to settle. Uh, to get that to go away, you need to make a decision. 2021, you should have 
your decisions ready, active to go forth for 2021. 2021. You know, make it get the get the get the things, get the plan uh now. Get the plans together now so that you be ready to move out. Quiet those other voices. There's too many voices that are speaking today. There's violence here. There's murder there. There's so many voices that just want to take from you and take from you and just hurt your heart and hurt your heart and, and, and you can't take it anymore. So you need to bring in that peace, that peace of God that surpasses all understanding. It's time to, to make the decisions. It's time to make righteous decisions righteous decisions get things in order now you can get things in order you make a decision on something now you're getting things in order i you can't keep continue to hold grudges against people uh, why keep yourself in bondage you got to grow up sometime you got to settle some issues you got to forgive. If you're in Christ, you got to forgive. You have no option. He's not going to listen to listen to you and you going around with anger and, and all of that in your heart. You got to settle some issues. Hmm? Okay. So, verse 20. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared in, in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. The Savior. Jesus is the Savior. He's the Savior. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Emmanuel is not a name. It's, it's not a, 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 a title. That's who he is. That's who he is. He is God with us. Emmanuel. It's not his name. His name is not Emmanuel. <laughs> That's who he is. <laughs> God with us. And look, 24, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. <laughs> he took her. Come on. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus and he gave him the name Jesus, which the angel was saying that they are to call him Jesus because he's going to save the people from their sins. Now you look at that and you think, wow, I got angels, you know, coming in my bedroom. They're speaking to me when I go to sleep and my life should be just merry and rosy and, you know, I got the open heaven over me and all of this. And you thought trouble was when he thought she was pregnant out there messing around. Now the trouble really has begun. But it can't be. I got the blessings of God in my life. I got the favor of God in my life. But why is all this happening to me? angels and and, I, and god is speaking to me but i'm sick and i'm like this sickness is gonna leave but but god is talking to me and i got a good relationship with the lord i talk to him i pray and i give and he he talks to me and and he says he loves me and all of this but i'm having problems joseph and mary's thing is just getting started you know a lot of young couples get married and when they get married they get married because uh where well, they were going to get married and uh they ended up getting married even sooner because the baby is on the way and um 
So they're not able to plan exactly the way they wanted to plan because they got to make the plans for the baby. They got to make the, the get the room for the baby. They got to make decisions that uh, uh, that's for the baby. It's like the baby, which was the last one to enter into this twosome's life. Now it's a three, but the baby takes first place. Everything is around the baby now. It's not around the couple. Everything is around the baby. And that's we, we know that in the natural. You that that little bitty person, I mean, it uh takes up more room. It takes up more of everything. But that's the smallest person in the room. So Mary and Joseph's life now, uh, with this baby and angels and all of that, their their life is is is, is changed forever. It, it, it's um they're starting out in a way that uh you know a lot of us we really don't like to start out that way it wasn't planned to start out that way but we may have got caught in some situations in this and 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 now you find yourself pregnant and your marriage starts out that way and so um he took her home he became her husband, she's the wife, and their life has changed. It's turned around, and it's all about the baby, and not just any baby. There are unseen forces that want to kill the baby. There's a king after the baby uh, because he doesn't want this baby uh, to uh, be in the spotlight. He doesn't want this baby uh, to be called king. This baby's kingdom is going to be against his kingdom this baby is a baby of light and he is a man of darkness and uh all of this and and he's sending out people and to kill the babies and and all of that because he wants this baby so this is a family that's always on the run that they uh trying to settle down and 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 uh get their lives together and uh angel come and say no you gotta go to egypt and out of egypt i call my son and uh <laughs> now you go to nazareth and uh, you gotta go to, to uh the city of david where the census has got to be counted you gotta uh you know you gotta do all these things so Joseph and Mary were people on the move. They were on the move all the time. But uh, the wonders of having heaven with them, having God's son with them, I don't think that, um, I think there may have been you just the reverence of fear there of acknowledging that you got God's son and what had happened to her. But to also know that this was a scary situation because I got to always be on my toes. I got to be, you know, it, it's just a, a, a situation that is almost unexplainable. The things that this couple had to sacrifice, that uh, their, their lifestyle, you know, and, and we look at ours, we want God with us, and God is with us. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But things still happen. Jesus came to save the people from their sins. You know, to save us from our sins. Our sins that the sentence was death, eternal uh, separation from God damnation to save us from from all of that to give us a new life you know that we can be born again <laughs> spiritually and live forever with him <sighs> boy i mean you look back and you look at this couple and the things that joseph was uh you know was facing it, it, it's unimaginable and poor mary who was she to talk to you know, if, if it wasn't for the fact that Angel stood in the gap and talked to Joseph, where would she be? Where would the child have been? Where would we be today? It would been a totally different uh, outcome to this. You know, God would have brought the victory, but to whom does, uh, would he have brought it through? 
Amen. Hallelujah. It's just, wow. In getting ready to close. Getting ready to close. When Jesus enters into our lives, we have to make some decisions also. Do, do we buy the gospel story? The life, the death, the resurrection. Do we buy some of it and not uh, the rest of it? Do we, you know, the whole story? What part do we keep? What part do we get, get, you know, get rid of? Do we believe in the virgin birth of Jesus? And yet when the gospel was presented to you, did you do the prayer right, right then? And ask Jesus to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior? Or did you say, you know, I'm not ready yet, you know? Uh, because when Jesus comes, this baby comes, as, as he came into their lives, there were some decisions that had to be made. There were some sacrifices that had to be done. You know, the Jesus, of course, is a free gift to us. We got to open up our heart. But are you ready to do that? Are you ready to truly let him have everything? All of you. When he came into their lives, we saw that they uh, gave all their heart to him. They opened up their lives to him. They protected him. They fed him. They made sure he was kept. They, they, they had God's son. But we'll say, you know, I'm not ready. Uh, uh, um, many people that I've witnessed to, a lot of them received the Lord right then. They were ready, but then there were some that weren't ready. There were some that had just walk, no and walk on, kept on walking. No. Nope. <clears throat> this was life changing for Joseph and Mary. When you received Jesus into your heart, was it life changing? Has your life been changed since you have uh, Jesus? Did it change? Did your talk change? Did your walk change? Did your attitude change? Did more peace come into your life? Or more bitterness? Did, <clears throat> are you harder? Or did you become soft? Did more pride come in there? Or are you humble? <clears throat> I know people that are Christians and they will tell another Christian, if I die, I don't even want you to come to my funeral. You know? I mean, just mean things. Ugly things, hateful things, and and it cuss like a sailor, but they're they they tell you they're Christians. They're ready to be the first one to give, the first one to bake you a cake, the first one to take something to you if you're in the hospital, come see you. They the first ones. Hmm. But what change? What change? The world does that. What has changed in you? That you could, that, that someone could really see that you are a child of God. Are you able to forgive quickly? Are you offended easily? Are you always talking about what you hate? What you can't stand? Are you always putting something in, oh, that's so ugly? Is it always negative things that come out of your mouth? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, this was life changing for Joseph and Mary. This young couple sacrifice. This young man was was when he made a decision, he stuck by it. If that's if you're my wife, you're my wife to death do us part. He held on to his his word. He was a man of integrity. If you're a Christian, do you have integrity? If you're a Christian, do you have character? If you're a Christian, do you have love? If you're a Christian, do you have joy? If you're a Christian, do you have some peace? What is it that you have that you can give to someone else without cost? Without money? What is it that you have? Did you lose friends or family members because of Jesus? Did people turn their backs on you because of Jesus in you? Now you can better understand the pondering Joseph was experiencing. The hurt, the pain, the ripping of his heart into tiny pieces and then thrown on the ground and walked on as he thought Mary had 
you know, messed around on him. Now you can understand the story a lot better. Now you see. And yet, God blesses us. If we believe in him, he blesses us. And yet God would never leave you, nor forsake you. Yet God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you ask or think. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get to my points and get ready to close. My first point. In walking with God, you need to first believe that he exists and be ready to do some things that you feel that are not really important. But in Christ Jesus, you need to get some things in order. How would anyone believe that you are a child of God living and acting in the way that you are? How would anyone believe that you are a child of God? You got to show them. Not going to tell them, but you got to show them. My second point, you need to know who you are in Christ. Joseph was called a righteous man. What did you think the angel would call you if in your dream and he visited you? What do you think the angel would call you? Start being a person of integrity, easy to forgive an offense, looking for the right way God would want you to talk to people, to be truthful to people. To be honest. Hallelujah. My third point. Love covers a mo covers over a multitude of sins. Try it and free yourself from the yoke of bondage. Try it and free yourself from the yoke of bondage. Love covers over, over a multitude of sins. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is just a simple, simple prayer. Very powerful, but simple prayer. It moves you from the dominion of the kingdom of darkness into the dominion of the kingdom of light of where God is. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. And so I pray that today is the day that you would receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And start getting your life in order. Start getting your your uh, your things in order in your life. Amen. First, admit that you are a sinner. Believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. And confess him as your Lord and Savior. Confess him as your Lord and Savior. Jesus, come into my heart. I need you. Forgive me of my sins. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you for being God. I thank you. I need you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I believe that you're in the kingdom of God, that God's Son has entered into your heart, who is Jesus, and that he is going to uh, help you to uh, walk the, this walk by sending you his spirit. And he's going to lead and guide you and help you. And so I pray that you have a hunger and a thirst for the righteous things of God. And that uh, you be effective in the kingdom. Take your rightful place and be effective in the kingdom. And win many souls to God. <laughs> and win many souls to God. Wow. Wow. As you tell them your story, you tell them your testimony. Things in, that you've been through in life and how God has met you. Believe me, those confessions draw people into the kingdom of God. So be blessed, be encouraged, and yet this is not the end of the story. Amen. Amen.